Bak. Merhaba arkadaşlar. Hepiniz AFC Top webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün ABD'nin en iyilerinden Kent State University'de veri bilimi ve yapay zeka alanlarında yüksek lisans programlarını Salma ve Arvind'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından yönlendirmeyi unutmayın. Yes Salma, the stage is yours now. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go ahead and share my slide. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Salma Benaida, and I'm the Director of International Admissions at Kent State University. I am joined by my colleague, Professor Arvin Bansal from our computer science faculty. And today, we would like to introduce you a little bit to Kent State University, especially to our Masters of Science in Artificial Intelligence. Um, this is a, a very big emerging field with big demand on the job market, and we're really excited to present this to you today. And so um, just to get us started, I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea about Kent State, where we're located, what type of school we are, because there are 4,000 universities or institutions in the United States. Um, and so we are a public research university that was founded in 1910 as a teacher training school. And we are located in the city of Kent, Ohio. We have been ranked with the U.S. News and World Report as a top national university, as well as in the top public schools of national universities. What's great about Kent State is that we offer over 300 programs from bachelor's, master's to doctoral um, programs, so very comprehensive university. We also have over 28,000 students enrolled with over 1,500 international students from 100 countries. Uh, so a lot of diversity. We have a lot of Turkish students. We work we're very closely with the um, government scholarships for Turkish students, and, and we host very many students. The campus also offers 25 residence hall, uh, residential learning communities, and 22 dining halls. Something that we take very seriously as Kent, Kent State is our safety. So out of over 4,000 institutions in the US, we're ranked the 25th safest nationally. So it's a very safe and welcoming environment, especially for such a big university. Also something that I would like to highlight is that 92% of students who graduate from Kent State are employed or continuing their education within six months of graduation. So great placement uh, rate for the job market. We're very connected to a lot of economies. And so it's a really good investment that you make in your education because you do end up getting a job very quickly um, upon graduation within six months. And just to give you an idea a little bit of the location of Kent State, as I mentioned, it is located in Kent, Ohio. So if any of you are familiar with Cleveland or LeBron James, um, if you watch any NBA basketball, he used to play for the for the Cavaliers in Cleveland. So we're very close to Kent. To, Cleveland, but we're also very close to Pittsburgh. Um, it's about an hour drive. Chicago is a six hour drive or an hour flight as well as New York City. Um, and you can see in the blue and yellow, that's kind of where we are in the map of the United States. And some of the colleges that we have, or in Turkey, I think a lot of people refer to them as faculties. Um, we have a College of Aeronautics and Engineering. We have a College of Architecture and Environmental Design. We have a College of Education, Health, and Human Services. A College of Communication and Information. A College of Business Administration. College of Podiatric Medicine a College of Arts and Science, and this is where our computer science department is, a College of Public Health, a College of the Arts, a College of Nursing, 
and an honors college. So these are all the faculties within our universities and each one of these colleges offers a plethora of programs and majors. And now I would like to hand it over to my colleague, Professor Arvind Bansal, so he can share a little bit about our Master's in Artificial Intelligence. Uh, thank you, Salma. It's a great introduction. And I must connect to you before my office mate was a Turkish girl long time back when I was doing PhD. Her name was Umit. So uh, I'm kind of very familiar with Turkish culture. That's okay. Uh, now, uh, next slide, please. Yes, thank you. So we started with computer science three decades back, and we offer PhD masters in computer science. And uh, recently, we have been approved by the state to offer two new master's program. One is master's in artificial intelligence. Other is master's in data science. Both of them use artificial intelligence, but masters in artificial intelligence is more focused towards artificial intelligence related courses. Masters of data science mixes mathematics and uh, artificial intelligence together. And uh, so it is more interested in, in uh, data analysis, while uh, artificial intelligence is also interested in uh, process analysis, optimization, uh, and uh, vision uh, and uh, robotics, which is not offered by data science. But both of them are being offered from fall of 2021, and both of them are in high demand. Uh, all of them are STEM areas, science, technology, uh, engineering, and math areas. And then right now, STEM areas are picking up in the job market a lot. So that means both artificial intelligence and data science have got high job market. Next slide, please. OK, so that if I look at uh, from the job perspective, it is assumed for the next decade or next couple of decades, the growth rate will be 20 to 30 percent in the job market, which is very high and even Current demand of 69,000 people, if you open, uh, if you go to internet and uh, look around, you'll see around 69,000 open jobs are there in USA and they pay very high because the demand is high and supply is less. Suddenly the demand came and uh, universities were not ready to meet that demand. So salary can go uh, from, they vary from 80 to 200K with an average around 165K, which is very high. And uh, there is a whole lot of uh, uh, industry which are uh, investing, uh, multinational universities like IBM, Google, uh, Amazon, they are investing in uh, AI. And the uh, US government is investing in AI, especially in defense sector. and. Uh, so it is going to grow for next two decades and it will become a trillion dollar uh, industry by 2035. We are focusing in three major areas of artificial intelligence in this program. Intelligent analytics, which does the analysis of uh, the process and data and optimization uh, so that you can do better and faster and uh, learning will come under this. Robotics, which is uh, developing automated machines, intelligent machines, uh, which will do the job like intelligent surgery, uh, uh, robots, uh, which are human-like robots, machine-like robots. One such example of robots is uh, making fish like dolphins for uh, uh, a museum so that uh, uh, kids can learn instead of uh, putting that, taking the real fish and putting the tanks, uh, AI will take care of that. So uh, also you can have uh, all those in defense sector, you can have intelligent uh, uh, ships, you can have intelligent cars, 
automated cars, automated transportation, all of them will come under that. Then we have got smart communities and automation where we talk about smart homes, smart cities, and uh, automation. Under automation will come transportation, energy, uh, Internet of Things, where every instrument in your house is smart enough. So if you run out of something in a refrigerator, it will not, uh, you get the groceries automatic, automated. All that is part of smart communities and automation. Also, health. Uh, health is part of intelligent health is part of uh, smart automation we will have variable devices where uh, if there is a problem with your heart then it will be automatically sent to the doctor and um, uh, you'll be asked to pull over while you're driving or uh, uh, you'll be given instruction on your cell phone so imagine of that interconnected world where everything is intelligently being analyzed and uh, connected to each other. So that will come under smart communities and automation. Uh, artificial intelligence is a highly sought STEM area. And STEM area is a good buzzword right now in the job market. Uh, next one, please, Salma. OK, so if I look at the infrastructure of Department of Computer Science, where it is housed, we have been uh, teaching computer science at master's and PhD level for last 34 years. And we have got a big faculty member, uh, strength around 20 uh, faculty members, out of which 14 professors are associated with AI related research. And uh, we have already been offering PhD in computer science. So a lot of research and AI has gone under P computer science research. So we have, we have been graduating masters in AI and PhD in AI for a very long time. It's just that now we are focusing the courses. We are picking up the courses, only AI related courses and offering as a masters. And uh, so there are a lot of uh, elected area, uh, elective courses in these three theme areas intelligent analytics, robotics, and smart communities and automation. Next one, please. Selma, next slide. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if I, if you look at MS in computer science, uh, we, uh, what is the admission requirement? You can have bachelor's in computer science, computer engineering, artificial intelligence, data science, information technology and related areas. Uh, the uh, GPA should be greater than 3.0 out of a scale of 4.0. Uh, GRE score, right now they are suspended because of COVID, but when, when they start, it will be 295 and above. Uh, and we look at both quantitative and uh, uh, reading test. Uh, and, uh, Test for uh, some foreign test, English as a foreign language, like TOEFL or uh, MELAB or IELTS, and the scores are given. Uh, this is also for your communication while you are in the United States, and it's also part of visa requirement. Uh, in terms of uh, AI requirement, background requirement, you must be proficient in programming, and you must have done background courses from your bachelor's, which includes discrete structures, which is foundational course of mathematics in uh, computer science. You should have the data structures course, which is uh, uh, again in computer science foundational course, algorithms. And uh, you. we also recommend operating system course, but it's not necessary for AI program, although it's necessary for computer science program, but operating system is ne less needed in artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, if you lack one or uh, two courses, but you have got an excellent uh, credentials in your program, but because every program is differently uh, engineered, uh, we we will consider, provided your GPA is very good, 
your GRE scores are very good, then we can say, OK, if you don't know data structures, we can teach you data structures here. Or if you don't know algorithms, we can teach you algorithms here. Uh, you will not be given credit for that course, but you will be admitted to the program. And once you've done that course, then regularly you will be treated as a regular master's student in artificial intelligence. Next one, please. OK, so there it's a two years program. And there are 30 credit hours, which you have to do, which approximately translates to 10 courses, equivalent to 10 courses. And you will do eight courses and a project. There are two pathways you can uh, get your degree. One is doing the thesis. Other is doing non-thesis, which is a, more like an industrial grade software project. Uh, thesis is more originality based, those who want to do PhD or want to do research in uh, national labs, they have to choose thesis pathway. Those who want to get involved in industry, uh, you have to choose a non-thesis pathway. And non-thesis pathway generally has got two parts. One is internship, industrial internship, where one summer you spend in uh, industry, it also tells you what are the problems industry is uh, having and uh, what kinds of problems you will be of software you will be developing and another three credits is your uh, uh, capstone project where you develop a software uh, project and uh, everything takes around 12, four semesters approximately two years and uh, uh, there in terms of coursework we have got four mandatory courses artificial intelligence the first course, machine learning, advanced artificial intelligence, and advanced database systems. These are four core courses which everybody will take. There is one foundational course where you got a choice, and that's uh, uh, algorithm and robotics, and or inform uh, intelligent information visualization, or pattern recognition. You have to take one of these three courses, and remaining three courses you can take as an elective courses out of the 15 courses which are offered. Obviously, all the courses will not be offered at the same time in the same semester, but you will have enough choice and you can, uh, and they're uh, uh, told in advance and you can find out which courses you want to take much in advance. Next one, please. Okay. Yeah. OK, so you can see the choice of the courses. Uh, I, on the top one, you see four core courses on the left and right. Then you've got a foundational course, one out of three. And after that, you've got electives. And you can see the choice of electives. You've got robotics theme, like software development for robotics, advanced digital design, human computer interaction, all of the, those are robotics courses. Then you've got intelligent analytics course, big data analytics, probabilistic data management, and uh, multimedia systems and biometrics, scientific visualization. Uh, then uh, you've got data mining techniques, computational health informatics. All of them are analytics course. Then under robotics, you can also have vision, a course on vision, wireless and mobile com uh, com uh, communication. Some of the courses may be uh, put in more than one uh, theme area. And we don't uh, tell you which theme area to take. And you can mix and match uh, from different theme areas. It's possible. And in the end, you do capstone project. and that completes your degree requirement. Next one, please. Salma? OK, so we have got a lot of uh, uh, professors, and the names are given of the faculty member, then research interest. And uh, so you can see my name. I, I do work in analytics, 
emotions and gestures, social robotics like making a human like Android, and computational health informatics. Professor Carl works on natural language processing, machine translation, human machine interaction. Dr. Kuang Guan works on new uh, 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 human brain. Uh, he is more interested in developing human brain. So he works on neuromorphic computing and advanced neural network. Uh, Dr. Ru Ming Jin works on deep learning, uh, biomedical informatics, and uh, intelligence in the uh, social network. Uh, Dr. Khan works on how to acquire knowledge by reading books. So if your computer or machine can read books and acquire knowledge from there, so he's interested in that. He's also interested in uh, how uh, human vision by scanning, uh, like uh, eye scanning, how you can uh, gather the knowledge. And AI in education is in big way funded by UN in uh, education in Africa and Southeast Asia. So he's more interested in uh, education also in a big way. Uh, Dr. Kim has developed uh, many robots and he's also interested in connected robotics. There are multiple robots talking to each other at the same time. And he has, uh, his lab is considered top 10 in the world in terms of, uh, he has won many competitions, uh, top 10 in the world, and uh, he's also involved with NASA in developing their uh, uh, NASA suit and uh, that uh, aeronautic suit. And uh, Dr. Jong Yoon Kim is wor uh, uh, working on wearable health devices and uh, health informatics. He's also working on automated sensors and automated houses with smart homes. Next one, please. OK. Dr. Kwong Te Kim is, uh, works on augmented reality in haptics. That means uh, uh, like human uh, interactions or, or skin-based uh, touch, uh, touch censorship and also is working on variable devices for touch rehabilitative robotics. Dr. Jiang Lian is work, uh, working on probabilistic databases and uh, advanced databases, like uh, when, when time is involved in the uh, data representation, how to match two time series, how to analyze the uh, time-based data. So that's what his interest is. Dr. Lu works on vision and medical image analysis, like brain analysis, brain image analysis, or radio scan of uh, uh, CAT scan data analysis. He also works with, uh, with handicapped children. Dr. Peravi works on uh, wireless and mobile communication and cybersecurity. Dr. Samba works on intelligent drones flying in the air and how to control them. Dr. Sharma works on um, developing algorithm for robotics and Internet of Things. That means smart devices connected to each other in smart homes. Dr. Zhao works with smart committees, how to do planning for smart cities, how to do smart information visualization, intelligent information visualization. Uh, and that's the associated faculty. You can say they, we are well represented in three, these three theme areas, intelligent analytics, robotics, and smart community and automation. Next slide, please. OK, so we have got multiple laboratories where you can work either when you are doing the project or if you are very motivated and show interest and talk to this, these professors while you are doing their course, you may get involved with them much earlier. So we have got a computer vision laboratory, artificial intelligence laboratory, uh, information visualization laboratory, perceptual engineering and uh, automated knowledge acquisition laboratory, big data laboratory. Next one. Salim, yeah, okay. 
we have got robotics laboratory. It's called te tele-robotics because multiple robotics can communicate with each other. So one example I will show you that uh, tell you about is that they have developed a maintenance robot which won the ten, uh, which was in top ten uh, finalist in Japan twice, and uh, he also has worked uh, uh, police cops, tele robotics police cops, where they communicate with each other and observe things. Uh, then we have got digital science uh, laboratory where uh, Dr. Zhang Yun Kim is interested in smart devices, smart homes, and sensor networks. We have got distributed robotics, uh, which is, uh, again, uh, it is related with uh, uh, robots communicating to each other, like it is smart devices or robots. And uh, that is uh, under Dr. Sharma. We have got wireless and mobile networks, which is Dr. Uh, Peravi. He also worked in cybersecurity. And the last one is uh, Professor Carl is very famous internationally. He works on natural language processing and natural language translation. And all of them is at the 10 laboratories, AI related laboratories, where you can work. Next one, please. OK, so one of the natural question which comes to uh, students when they join our universities or program is, do I get any graduate assistantship? What kind of assistantship or financial support is there? So uh, there is graduate assistantship. There is also lab instructorship. And there are campus-related programming jobs. But anything which comes, it comes with your capability. You have to compete for it, and you have to get it. So we have got around 23 uh, graduate assistantship, but uh, we have got around 200 master's and PhD students. So you can see that competition is tough and uh, fierce, and uh, uh, you have to uh, prove yourself. The same thing is with lab instructorship. So graduate assistantship comes with uh, tuition waiver as well as uh, uh, stipend, which is sufficient, around $1,500 per month, and tuition waiver. Lab instructorship pays half of it. Then campus programming jobs, they pay at different rates, depending on where you got the job. But generally, they come around $12 to $14 an hour. And it uh, depends on, you can't work more than 20 uh, hours a week. So it uh, it gives you sufficient money around 1000 or 1500 or $1,500 a month. And, uh, uh, but uh, programming jobs may or may not come with tuition waiver. Then we have got other campus jobs like cafeteria, library, uh, and, uh, Sometimes you can also get jobs with uh, interpreter or uh, helping students, uh, especially in residence halls. And uh, then we, have, we also have got something called graders, where an instructor suddenly comes and says, the, there are too many students in my class, and I will need somebody for grading. And uh, then you get 20 hours per week on hourly wages which is around $12 an hour. So we have got financial support, and everybody finds out something to support themselves. But it's up to your initiative uh, and your capability to get the jobs. Next one, please. OK, so Salma, you take over here. Salma? OK. All right. So if I look at uh, the expenses, then uh, in, uh, we have got a tuition, uh, which you can see is around $18,000 or $19,000. Living expenses, you, if you, there are two ways you can live. Either you can live in the dorm, which is slightly more expensive. But many times, uh, students live in a rented apartment. Uh, uh, 
uh, three to four students live in a rented apartment and they share their utility expenses and rent and that comes out much cheaper than that which uh, so an estimated uh, expense is around thirteen thousand dollars then you've got you have to take medical insurance which is mandatory uh, to take and book supplies which comes around five thousand dollars so total expense per uh, year will be around thirty seven thousand dollars and uh, so uh, if approximately you land up uh, in two years, it will be around uh, eighty to hundred thousand uh, dollars total expense. All right. So in uh, in terms of application process, uh, you have to have the you have to uh, fill in the application form, which is on the internet. And uh, you can visit the uh, uh, link uh, uh, given at the bottom, admission slash apply slash international. And they have got, and there's also a guide how to apply. Again, international office has got a guide, which you can sit next to the last one. And uh, generally you have to fill up a form. You have to have proof of English test, which is TOEFL or IELTS. Uh, and uh, then you have got, you need two to three recommendation letters. Your transcripts, recommendation letters and transcripts have to be sent directly. Uh, so is TOEFL. Uh, and uh, along, uh, along with it, you have to send your goal statement and resume. Uh, for all these recommendation letters, transcripts, and TOEFL, you have to directly request them. and you have to be on watch out whether your application is complete. So you have to keep checking that your application is complete. If not, then uh, you have to tell your uh, professors that to send the recommendation letters or your college to send the uh, transcript, which is directly accepted using deposit boxes by the university. Once your application is complete, it takes around two to three weeks to make a decision. Next one, please. Okay, so a lot of frequently asked questions are, is, mass, is MS in artificial intelligence a STEM area? Yes, artificial intelligence was originally computer science, and uh, it, is, it has huge amount of mathematics and computer programming and uh, computer science in it. And uh, it is, it tries to solve the problems which regular computer science cannot solve. So certainly it is STEM area or more than a STEM area. So now the question, uh, another question people ask is, what is the difference between computer science or AI, I do AI within computer science and I take masters in AI program. So when you do computer science it has got a different requirement because computer science is very vast so we have got certain core requirements and once you meet the core requirements then ai comes as an elective so you do you land up doing only two or three courses in artificial intelligence if you're interested in artificial intelligence but when you do masters in artificial intelligence you're doing eight courses in artificial intelligence or ai related area and you and you do an AI related project. So it is very focused and concentrated in AI team. So that's the major difference between MS AI program and MS computer science. As I said in the beginning, the job prospects are tremendous. There's 20 to 30% growth rate. There are very little supply and there are 69,000 jobs right now floating around and uh, in different areas and uh, you can just search on internet and put ai jobs and you'll get a whole lot of listing and the jobs are in uh, health sector defense sector transportation industry robotics uh, bad machine interfaces financial bank uh, like uh, fraud analysis in uh, health science there's uh, a process analysis it, uh, optimizing in industrial process, there are a whole lot of jobs.
Next one, please. Okay. So some of the jobs, the kind of jobs you get, as I say that, uh, just type in artificial intelligence jo jobs in monster.com or indeed.com and you will see that whole lot of jobs there. Let me not try to convince you. You should find out yourself. Uh, and uh, program will take two years to complete. And uh, if you, we don't recommend to uh, for you to fast track your program because your grades may be spoiled. But if you can utilize your summer efficiently or uh, to take a summer course or do internship uh, the first summer, then uh, you can do it faster. Uh, and uh, we generally recommend you do three courses in a semester. That's an optimal load. Uh, but department has allowed in the past for those students who have got a, a very good grades in the next semester, in the third semester and fourth semester, they have allowed them to take four courses in case they've got good grades. And uh, so that way, people who maintain high GPA in the first year, they can uh, uh, finish the program faster. So we are uh, industrial internship. Is it mandatory? Not for international students, because if there is a visa problem, then uh, there is uh, not much you can do. So we have substituted internship, uh, three credit of internship by the project. So you can do a major project instead of three credit project, you can do six credit project, and that will be counted as internship. Uh, but Internship is always useful because you see, if you can get it, it's wise to get it because you see the problem from the industrial perspective and you look at and see what industry needs. And also it helps you in getting the job after you uh, finish your uh, graduation, then internship uh, uh, is more preferred because industry already knows that you know what industry's problems are there and uh, so they encourage you. Are the graduate assistantship automatic upon admission? No. Uh, we admit a lot more students than their graduate assistantships. So in computer science, masters and PhD students, around 200 students are there, but we have got assistantship only 23 or 24. So, uh, and it's a common pool. Everybody goes through the common pool, so you have to you have to compete uh, among yourselves. To and it's very much merit based. It goes through two level of uh, uh, merit assessment, and then students from the top are picked up and given uh, assistantship. I suppose I'm done with that, uh, Salma. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, you can see some of this uh, uh, where you can apply. And the uh, best thing is to go to International Student Office and uh, ask for help in case you get lost. Yes, and we do have some time to take some questions. I see we have a few questions. Um, and so I will start from the bottom. So we go to the first ones. Um, so there is a question from Nikati that is asking if we have any two plus two dual programs with Turkish universities. At the moment, we uh, don't have a two plus two. We do have some partner universities in Turkey that we work with, but we don't have a two plus two. Um, and we do have an intensive English program at our university. Um, and actually, a lot of the government scholarship students are placed in our intensive English program. 
Do you have any Turkish faculty members? Yes, we have um, a lot of Turkish faculty members throughout many of our colleges. I'm not sure there are some in computer science, but I know we have some in our College of Education, as well as in our aerospace um, engineering. Great questions. How many Turkish students do you have in total? We have about 20 Turkish students. Most of them are at the master's or PhD level. Um, we usually have one or two that are undergraduate students as well. So we, yes, do you still have an effective MOU agreement with, with Bassisher University? Yes, it's still active. They are one of our partner institutions. We currently do not have a representative in Turkey, but we do travel to Turkey twice a year before Corona. Um, and now we're, we're virtual with our Turkish outreach, yes. And this one is for you, Professor Bansal. We have Setenai asking, what is the minimum GRE score needed to apply? Uh, right now, because of Corona, uh, everything is suspended because uh, ETS is not offering in a desirable way uh, this GRE. So we have suspended it. Uh, but uh, when it is offered, it's 295 plus. Yes. And uh, so generally, if you got around 150 or 116 quantitative and uh, uh, 130 to 140, and it's a holistic, we don't uh, say that quantitative is this or uh, English is uh, this, but uh, total, we look at total, if it's 295 plus, then we accept it. Great, and right now this is a really good time to apply because we are GRE optional for um, the MS in artificial intelligence, so it's not required, as well as our computer science program um, because of the COVID pandemic. How many elective courses can we get per term maximum? Okay, three courses, you, you are, we recommend you do, don't do more than three courses and uh, there, if everybody starts from the beginning, then you do uh, three elective courses, but many students have done the first AI course in their bachelor's program or because of their uh, background in AI in industry, and they can ask for a waiver. So in that case, you can do four course, four elective courses uh, all together, and uh, they're and you have to spread it out in third semester or fourth semester, or even starting second semester, because uh, you have to do the project in your area. So faster you do the elective courses. Uh, it's a chicken and egg problem because core courses you have to do before uh, you uh, do the elective courses. Otherwise you won't be able to start thinking in AI-ish way. And, uh, so we want to think in terms of intelligent uh, modeling of the problem. And uh, so there is a optimization. I will suggest that in second semester, take one elective. In uh, third semester, take all uh, two, uh, two electives or three electives. And fourth semester, do the project. Great. Um, we have another question. Can we get short-term pre-sessional English if we can meet language level? Um, so yes, so our computer science program, the minimum for TOEFL is 71 and the, uh, or the IELTS is 6.0. We're also accepting the Duolingo English test that you can take from home that uses a lot of artificial intelligence um, as well to administer. Um, and if you are a little bit lower, maybe if you get a 5.5, you can start in our intensive English program. And then when you get your English at that level, um, you could be admitted or considered for the computer science program. How long does it take to get accepted to Kent State for the MS in artificial intelligence? We are accepting now. And it's, uh, it's actually, uh, 
around the ear, it, it is there, but uh, the two uh, uh, we accept in fall, for fall semester as well as spring semester. Right now, we are taking for fall 2021, and it takes around three weeks by the time your after your application is completed, an international student office says, yes, application is completed. Then from our department, it will take around three weeks time to make the decision because it is sent to faculty members to evaluate it. Then it goes to the department chair approval. Then it goes to the dean's approval. And then uh, international student, student office uh, issues you an I-20 form based on your need. Yeah, so definitely around that three, four weeks, um, we encourage our international students to apply uh, as early as possible, even though admission for this program is on a rolling basis, um, just to make sure that you have enough time to work through the visa process so it's not stressful for you. Can international students do internships while studying? So if it is required as part of your program, you are able to apply for what we call CPT, curricular practical training. Um, and that will allow you to be able from an immigration standpoint to do an internship as long as it's related to your area of study and your major. And you can even get paid for that internship once you have your CPT approval. Um, and so that's definitely possible. And I think Dr. Bansell can talk a little bit more about what sort of internship placements um, students have. Okay, so uh, internship, you can do it two ways. One is that uh, uh, you can go through the department and department has got some industrial connections and they can place you or you can search yourself. And uh, we are in the process from computer science, we have got good connection with the industry. And as an AI program, before you come and apply for internship, you will have good connectivity by that time to for you to apply uh you can find out your own uh, look for uh in the job uh, uh section you can look for your own uh, internship requirement or advertisement and you can apply you are accepted then we can give you the approval it's a, a, a part of a required uh, requirement so we will give you the approval and uh, after that international student office will help you getting cpt Absolutely. Um, and so um, we have another question. Are we able to work in the USA after our graduation? Absolutely. And what I love about our artificial intelligence program or just all of our computer science programs um, in general is that you're able to work after graduation for what we call OPT, optional practical training. And with OPT, you can work anywhere in the United States. You're not limited by the geographic area where your university is. Um, you know, we have students that go and work for Apple and Google. A lot of people go to Silicon Valley and other places. So you're not limited. You can get paid. So you're working full time. And with artificial intelligence, it's considered a STEM field by the government. And so typically students will get one year of work permit in the U.S. But if they are in a STEM field that's classified by the U.S. government, they can renew it for up to three years. So if you pursue a master's of science in artificial intelligence at Kent State, you will be able to work for up to three years in the United States, anywhere you want in the United States, as long as it's related to your degree. Um, do you have the specific partner companies which with which we can do internships? Yeah. So, yes, in computer science, we have. Uh, in artificial intelligence, the program has started. We started uh, connecting to uh, the local industries. Uh, and we will also connect with uh, national uh, industries. And uh, by the time you start looking for it, yes, we will have some kind of agreement again if, when you say partner industries there's nothing like uh, because you are applying you'll be accepted you send your resume so that they said that they will 
honor it, they will look at their resume. But uh, finally, it goes uh, whether uh, uh, you meet their requirement. If you meet their requirement, then you, you will get the internship. Otherwise, you can apply to other places too. Yes, and we also have a career center at Kent State University, so we like to prepare our students for to be successful in their internship interview, because just getting an interview is kind of the first step. You have to do well in the interview. So we offer resume review where a career counselor can meet with you and work with you to, to enhance your resume and make sure that it meets American standards and that it's attractive. And also you can practice some commonly asked interview questions so that you're not you know, nervous or caught off guard when you do the interview. We also have all of our um, Kent State students will have access to a database that we call Handshake where all employers that the university works work with post internships, job opportunities on that platform. And that platform will be free for you and you will continue to have access to it as an alumni as well. Um, so a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of Fortune 500 companies um, located within Ohio. Uh, but as I've said before, especially when you do OPT, you really are not limited to anywhere in the US. Are there sports scholarships? So we are a Division I um, NCAA institution. So that means that we're at the highest level for the bracket for athletics. And so we do offer some athletic scholarships, of course. Um, students have to be very good and many times with our international students, they're nationally ranked in their country in whatever sports they play. So we have basketball, American football, uh, golf, track and field, a lot of different options. We do not have, um, you know, football or soccer uh, for men. Our team is a women's team. Um, and so it really depends on, you know, if you play professionally, if you have a coach that you work with, and if we have your sports. Um, in that case, you have to register with the NCAA and then, um, you know, work on that process. But we do offer athletic scholarships, um, but they're very competitive because we are Division I um, sport. I'll put my email um, in the chat as well as Dr. Bansal's email for anyone who wants to follow up. If you would like to know more about sports scholarship or if you want to tell me what sport you play and I can see if we have a professional team um, for that sport, I'm happy to connect with you. So another question, this is great. I love all the questions, so keep them coming. Do you also accept the Duolingo score? Yes, we absolutely accept the Duolingo English score. We try to make it as easy and convenient for you. We are trying to remove obstacles for you to apply. And especially with COVID, we want you to stay safe. So the Duolingo English test is a great test you can take from home. Um, it's very cheap as well uh, compared with other tests. Um, you know, when you're comparing $45 versus $250, that's a big, um, that's a big difference. So we absolutely accept the Duolingo English score for um, artificial intelligence. You would want to aim for a minimum score of 100. Okay. Can we also get information regarding average cost of living in Ohio? So absolutely. So first of all, you know, Ohio you know, because of its location and especially the city of Kent, because it's a small town, it's not a huge city. It's very close to big cities like Columbus and Cleveland, but it's still a small college town. Um, the cost of living is very affordable. We've actually done a comparison between the cost of living in Kent versus the cost of living in New York City, and it was just really, really crazy. So, um, you know, in our estimated expenses for, for your room and board, we want you to budget for about $14,000 
per year, and that includes your lodging and your food. This can be a little bit on the high side because it's based on living on campus. But if you are a graduate student, you're not required to live on campus. We have plenty of residential apartments um, that you can live in that are walking distance from campus. So it, it can be very affordable. Also, if you cook all your food at home and buy groceries instead of eating out all the time. That's a more economical way. So I would say it also depends on your lifestyle. Um, and so on average, about $14,000 per year, um, you know, will be will be something that you should be thinking um, about. Additionally, um, as a Kent State student, you will have access to the bus system in the whole city for free. So as long as you have your student ID, we have an agreement with the city transportation bus system where you can ride the bus for free as many times as you want. So that's also for students who maybe do not want a car or maybe they don't have enough money for a car. You really do not need a car for Kent. Um, it's very walkable and with the bus system, you can even go to cities such as Akron or Cleveland um, for about a dollar. How are career opportunities for international students um, after graduation? So I'll talk in general and then Dr. Vansal can add about artificial intelligence. Um, so career opportunities for international students are really great. Um, if you remember one of my first slides that I shared about 92% of students who graduate from Kent State, whether they're domestic or international, they get a job within six months or they decide that they wanna go for a PhD or some other degree. So it's very great placement, um, placement rate. We also organize multiple events um, and now we're doing them virtually be because of COVID. So a couple times a year, we host a job fair. So you don't have to go anywhere, it's on campus. We bring all the employers and you can you know, come dress up, bring your resume and you can meet them um, at that job fair. So we do a lot of outreach. Once again, we have a dedicated career services office that can help you. Um, they even have um, a, a test where you can find what your strengths are um, as well or what you like because sometimes people are not really sure what they want to do um, after college so that they, they can help you figure out what industry works well for you. So a lot of great career opportunities and a lot of support. A lot of our students do go on to do OPT. Many of them are able to get sponsored for an H-1B to remain in the U.S. But of course, we also have students who go back home and occupy really great positions, whether it's in the government or the private sector. Is it compulsory um, to have SAT for undergraduate application? No. So we are um, we are um, test optional for SAT and ACT for international students at the undergraduate level. So it's not required. Which programs are most popular among the Turkish international students? So that's a that's a tough one. Honestly, a lot. They're through all of our colleges. All of our colleges have international students in them. I would say for Turkish students, they are a lot in education. The graduate students, I see them a lot in curriculum and instruction, evaluation and measurement, as well as engineering. Uh, some undergraduate students, I see them also in communication studies. Did you both get the COVID vaccine? I'm getting mine on the 30th. So I'm getting mine next Tuesday. So I'm really excited. And something I should mention with everybody maybe being nervous about COVID, the state of Ohio uh, beginning March 29, anyone 16 and over is able to get the vaccine. So we're, we're doing really good. We're really hoping that by August, most people on campus and off campus will be vaccinated. So I can't wait. So I think we got through all the questions and we're only one minute over. Great. Um, thank you so much for your engagement. I will post my email and Dr. Bansal's email as well. 
Um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Dr. Bansal, what's your email? Uh, akbansal at ken.edu. Perfect. All right. Thank you again. And I hope you all stay safe. Uh, and I hope one day we can see you in, in Turkey <laughs> again. Yeah, thank you all. Great Bye. questions. Yeah, Bye. Thank you very much, Salma and Arvin, for your great presentation. And we had a lot of questions. You covered them all. Thank you. Uh, also, I would like to uh, thank the participants in Turkish as well. Bugün bütün teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Kent State University ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için Salman'ın paylaşmış olduğu mail adresinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda sizi altıdaki webinarımıza da davet etmek isterim. Thank you again. We believe it was a really informative webinar for the attendees and it was a great pleasure to have you in IFU Talk. Thank you so much for organizing. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.